All right. So it says we're live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to today's Hangout. I'm stoked. My name is Aaron Gonzalez, and I am here. Uh, I will be joined here in a second by, by my beautiful, enjoyable editor, Miss Nikki Magdalena. Um, but we also have here today uh, what, I, what I think is some pretty freaking awesome guests. Um, we have uh, Kevin and Melissa Connect, another awesome couple here that is partnered with us in this freedom movement, sharing with you guys uh, their story today. Uh, some of the things that they've done that have been pretty freaking incredible. I say freaking because I'm just like so excited, and, and f bombs might come at some point. Hopefully not. Um, we'll just see about that. But um, I'm excited that that Nikki and I have uh, have Kevin and Melissa out today because when we first started in this industry, like this is like our first rodeo. Um, you know, doing this kind of stuff, working on the internet, building teams of people, uh, lifting people up. Like this is our first time doing it. And I remember going to our first event. Uh, back in, well, back in in, in, in uh, January of last year, Austin. right, Austin, yeah. Austin, and then hearing about your story not long after that. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar, Kevin and Melissa have done something incredible. They've done over five hundred thousand um, dollars on the internet, part time in this business over the last two ish years. Is that right, guys? Two, two, a little over two, something like that. Yeah, with you. Yep. And uh, since we're gonna be talking about income, we just want to let you guys know. That um, there's there's a link at the bottom of this page where you can check out the income disclaimer. You can also go to powernetwork.com forward slash income. I just want you guys to be informed um, about you know income claims, right? Because you know we've made extraordinary amounts of income. We're gonna share with you guys some examples of not just us, but people on our team that are having huge success in this business right now. Um, later today, and I'm I'm getting all caught up, all fired up. Nikki, is there anything you think that I that I missed before we bring Kevin and Melissa out? I, I'm really excited to bring Kevin and Melissa out because <laughs> we have it home on a hangout before and I know we have our team and we have so many people that would love to hear from them and, and how they went from bankrupt, right? To from be, bankrupt yeah. to bank. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can I mean I'm I don't have anything to say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, um yeah, Kevin and Melissa, why don't you guys jump out, share with everybody, you know, some of your stories, some of your background. Um, let them know where you're coming from, whatever, whatever else it is you want to share, just come on out. Yeah, well, thank you very much. and uh, Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much for having us. And uh, I'm feeling kind of old listening to you guys. Like, this is your first business. I'm thinking, oh, my imagine, gosh. Imagine if this was our first. Yeah, we could well, have avoided so much pain. <laughs> 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 but uh, why don't you start, honey? Well, yeah, I mean, it's we, we have been around the block. I actually um, have been an entrepreneur basically all my life. Um, I was uh, in a, a, one of those old companies that starts with A when I was actually 15 years old, so it's kind of in my blood. <laughs> and um, Ten that, years ago. That, yeah. That's a long long story, but um, suffice it to say that, that I, I, I've always kind of thought outside the box when it came to things like that. And not to say that I didn't have jobs years ago. I was in banking, and I was in cellular in sales for a while, um, and uh, did you know some different things along the way. But... But it was just never, especially once I started having kids, I just was like, I, I don't want to be leaving them. It was really painful to leave um, my kids when, you know, they were really little. And uh, so I started looking again and um, started out with um, some MLM stuff, but it, it required that I go to houses and do meetings all the time. And I, I love this uh, term I had heard coined later on about where, um, that's a home-based business where home is the base and you get to tag it every once in a while. <laughs> and it was just, it was really true. It was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm out doing all these meetings. I'm out all the time. It's, you know, it's, and, and actually getting paid less because, you know, in, in a lot of MLMs, you, you don't make very much for your efforts. And then I was introduced to, um, to a top tier company. Um, and I looked at that and I thought about the effort I was putting in MLM and the effort that I would have to put out in this, and I thought, well, I, I don't have to really put out any more effort, and I can make so much more money. And so, to me, it seemed like a no-brainer. It was, um, and I actually had worked, um, went through a few different businesses with, with a woman that I had lived near, and um, it just made so much more sense. And and so that kind of got me really started in traveling and um, and and starting to make some bigger income, and uh, went through a couple different companies. Um, and had and then I uh, was on 
I had my back in the day <laughs> of, of online. The the only rodeo, the only rodeo then was uh, America Online AOL, and that's where like you were. That's how you were online and had a presence and could meet people and uh, talk and and that's where Kevin and I met actually. He uh, had a um, message about my business because in my profile I talked about my business and he was interested in that because he was doing MLM at the time and failing miserably. Her screen name was Miss M30. <laughs> <laughs> he was interested in your business. I see, I see. Yeah. Uh, an ode to Bette Midler, the divine Miss M. She was the only woman online who didn't have a job and I, I had to find out <laughs> what this was all about. How could a woman with children not have a job? Yeah. So anyway, I you know, did what the, the system called for at the time, told him to go to this comp this call and listen to it and then um, follow up. Well, it was uh, at the time you called to follow up and I, um, it was at Thanksgiving and so, you know, I called after the holidays and we talked for a really long time. He really hates when I say that it was seven hours. <laughs> but um, he said to me, after about three, we lived about three hours apart, after like three or four hours, he said, you know, I could have been already at your house. <laughs> And um, he says, okay, tomorrow night you're meeting me for dinner, and uh, you pick the place and I'll be up. And I thought, hmm, and that kind of got my attention. And so we met on December 8th of 97, and we were married at an event for the company that uh, we were in at the time, at December 8th of, of 99. And uh, Tanner showed up nine months to the day later. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it was... Um, but I, I was really searching for someone who could be a partner to me, that could dream with me, that really, a partner in all ways, right? Like somebody I could share this, this, this crazy, um, like desire to do, to really be successful in a, a, some sort of network marketing business. And and you know, and time, at times we were extremely successful. But when you work in anything top, the way that those top tier models were was. You know, it's a roller coaster. Um, you eat what you kill. You, you start every month at zero. There is no residual. You know, so you're only as good as the last, you know, sales that you made. And so, you know, there were times that we had, you know, eighty thousand dollars in in a little more than a month. And then other times that we hardly made anything. You know, so we, but it was okay. You know, for a while it was all we knew. And until you know, the company decided to uh, implode and. Um, that's a whole long story in and of itself that we won't get into, but um, we followed one of the partners, um, lost all our savings because we kind of believed that we were just hoping against hope that he could build something again, and we ended up funding his dream and and uh, <laughs> ended up that's really... That's how we went to the bankrupt side. Yeah, yeah. The bankrupt, right down the... Left, uh, we were in a we were great income-wise, and we were living in this great house. We had this big lease, um, and... Uh, ended up having to leave that house and move to a really tiny apartment. Um, and wow. you know, I've, I've said this too, it's like, it, it's it's one thing to fail, but to fail in front of your children is excruciating. And um, to put them through that. Now, you know, our son Tanner, he's never known anything but to be home because he does virtual school from home. So to him, as long as we were together, all was well. Um, but it was really stressful. I mean, there were times that um, I don't know if anybody online has ever experienced being so far down that, you know, you're ready to, to you know, of course, who's the closest person to blame is your, your significant other, right? And so we were, we were really on the rocks. <laughs> it was just, we didn't know where else to turn. Um, and we, you know, we had done a couple more things um, after that. And, um, and then I, my nephew died. And I went, and it was it was a real wake up call because I we couldn't afford for both Kevin and I to go uh, back to Pennsylvania where the funeral was. Um, I could I got standby tickets through a friend that worked in you know, her husband worked in the airline, like just I, and a family member paid for my daughter to come back, and that was just that was really low. It was really really rough, and you know it was there's a whole other long story after that. It was just really. Like, how bad can it get? You know, how much more can, of this can we take? And Kevin was at home feeling bad because, of course, he couldn't support me. And and that's when um, he found, you know, the, the company that we're working with now. Yeah, we just uh, got started for $25. And, you know, it's all the upsell videos. And I thought, well, I'm looking, you know, here's the rent money that's due in about 10 days. And here we can 
get these products and just get going and, and, <laughs> and, and make the money back. And uh, yeah. uh, by the way, we don't recommend you do that if you're in that spot. Yeah. Our results are a little bit atypical, mm -hmm. but that's what I decided to do. And I didn't, I didn't get the express written permission of Melissa to do that. I just did it. <laughs> yeah. well, that's a little naughty. That's a little naughty. I, don't, I don't recommend that, but uh, I did it. And uh, well, obviously we've turned it around a little bit mm -hmm. since then. And we've gotten out of the dusty old townhouse in Phoenix, and we yeah. moved to Georgia for a year up to Atlanta after we attended an event there. And and we just fell in love with this place here about this time last year and thought, all right, we've got six months in a lease up in Atlanta. Let's move down in January. If we hit X dollars and we hit X dollars with an explanation point. And uh, I tell you what, it's, it is uh, when you have something to look forward to, that's the greatest blessing. And uh, what we've gotten with Empower Network is just surrounding ourselves with great people like like uh, like Nikki and Avram, I mean, my gosh, I mean, look at these guys. First run, quarter million dollars in what? A year, two years, something like that. Nineteen, almost nineteen months. Nineteen months. That is incredible. Congratulations, you guys. I mean, that is awesome. It's really fun to hit certain goals too, because we we were like, well, okay, so when we were in Arizona, our next goal was to be, uh, we wanted to go to the East Coast. We wanted to move. We knew we wanted to move. Do something different. And uh, wanted someplace green and trees and East Coast. And so after the Atlanta event that we had been to, we decided to stay a couple extra days and look around and thought, okay, this is as good a place as any. There's a national airport here, international airport. Let's let's do it. And um, so we went home and set a goal. Um, my oldest son was living in Pennsylvania in a really awful job. And um, so part of that juicy goal was to reunite the whole family again, get him down. And... Um, and that's really a great thing to have is some sort of juicy goal out in front of you. Every time you accomplish one, you got to set another. And that's sometimes hard. I mean, when you get to a place, um, and that's one thing that we've been like, okay, so what's the goal now? <laughs> I mean, like we're 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 doing so well now. It's like you have to you have to get really creative sometimes. But but yeah, we wanted to get to we got to Atlanta, and um, it was we had lived in a, a townhouse community where every window you looked out was another building. It was all concrete, you know, everywhere. And so it was so nice to be able to be in a neighborhood, you know, in a house again, trees in the background, and just be surrounded by nature. And um, we, on Halloween night, we moved in October of uh, 2012. Right. And um, that, the, we, we went uh, trick-or-treating with Tanner in the, in a real neighborhood again. And that, it was, felt so sweet. I was so looking forward to doing that, meeting neighbors, it was friendly and like that. And we were checking our stats in our back office. And that night, we were so, I'm talking about being like so stoked already and about how energy, good energy begets good energy. Um, we, we had crossed over $100,000 that night. So it was like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> it was like so exciting. And, um, you know, we, we did, and so in our first full year, um, that was, we did about a, a, just over a quarter million? About a, quarter, a little less than a quarter million, and then um, uh, in the uh, two years it was, um, we, we were just over, about 500,000. Over a half million, and so we're like at, I don't know. We hit that on Olivia's 21st birthday. Yeah, we were, we were in Disney, Disney World. World. That's the other I thing. I remember you were in Disney World. Kevin shot the video. He's like, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's like really cool when you can start really just living your life by your own design. And um, when you start doing that, when you start to really be excited about life, it's kind of like the, the good energy feeds back in. You know what I mean? It all, all kind of interweaves. And, yeah, we're at... Uh, we've, Olivia turned 21, and we've asked, what does she want to do? She goes, I'm going to go to Disney World. And I'm like, okay. So we planned a trip there. Drink in every country around well, the world. She didn't. So know. she thought. So she thought. She had to. She made it. Two <laughs> countries. That's all she lasted. Oh, my <laughs> God. I, 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 I tried to eat my way around, and I didn't make it either. At yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be with your family and find out that we that was when we crossed over a half million was was pretty sweet. And um, so it's really kind of cool that, that you know, so, we're, so where are we going to be when we hit a million? I don't know. We got to be like in Europe or something. Anniversary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I, I guess the theme of this call today is that it really started. We started living again and dreaming again by getting around groups of people who were having the results that we wanted to have. And we went to our first event in Atlanta, kind of not knowing who who is Dave Wood, who's Tracy Walker, who's uh, Lawrence Tam. Who are these people? Are they real? And I know when you guys went to Austin, I think it sounds like your first event. Maybe you went through that as well. Yeah, but uh, and I know we're going to bring some people on to talk about the power of events and what we've got coming up in two weeks. My gosh, two weeks from today, 
Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's really, it's like you, it's not that you don't believe, um, you know, that everything, you know, before you've been to an event, it's not that you don't believe it, because especially if you've made some money, we, we had made some money, but it's a whole different thing. You get it on a cellular level when you get to an event, and what's so cool about this event coming up is that our company is just, it's its like experience or experiencing a huge rebirth. Um, I don't. I saw uh, somebody say online that where else do you do you know of a company that has um, beat a comp plan? Usually, when that happens, a field goes into <clears throat> you know, like they stop. They just absolutely stop. And all of us just made more money. I mean, that shows you you're with the right company. And um, you know, because they're always doing things with forethought and what what can be better for everyone. How's everyone that you know that comes here to work? How are they going to do better? And and so, I mean, this event coming up, you know, it's not about, well, if I have the money or if I do this or if I do that, then I will, you know, because we've had some people say to us, well, you know, I want to go. So if, if the money, basically, if the money just happens to show up, <laughs> if I make sales, if whatever, then I'll go. And that's really the wrong energy. You never want to look at your circumstances to make a decision. You make a decision based on where that's going to take you, and that affects your circumstances. And so, making a decision to be at this event—I mean, if you're in business, then that is the next—that is the next requirement for you to do to, to be in a successful business is to be in Charlotte. Then, when you make that decision, you draw that line in the sand. It's interesting how the things show up to support that. You know, the universe just shows up to support that. So, it's a nugget right there. You just dropped a nugget right there <laughs> about not making decisions based on. Can you, can you just share that? With circumstances. Not, you don't look at your circumstances to make a decision for your business. And that includes your bank account. Absolutely. That that's that is exactly what it it is. Most people say, "Well, I don't have the money to go," but that's the point. <laughs> that's the point. Right. That's why you need to be there. That's the reason you're you need saying. To be there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you are saying, oh my gosh, I don't know, I don't know if I can do it, or, you know, yeah, I want to, all that's wishy-washy energy. You will lead no one, but people want to follow someone who's going somewhere. So if you say, I'm going, and there have been, I mean, you guys know, you've heard, like, so many creative stories of how people got to events, and, uh, you know, it, it is really amazing to see see people get out of their own way, make a decision, and have the, you know, the circumstances show up then to support them. Uh, it is, if you're here to make money, well, that's, that's the biggest step you can take is to be at this event. Yeah, so, so you guys are talking about dreaming big, and, and you said you, I want to know what is, what is your next goal? What is the thing that you guys are shooting to do mm. uh, the next 90 days? On the spot, yeah. love it. Yeah, let's hear it. Well, here's here's a, our our, our we, when we come back from New Orleans, we made some new decisions mm -hmm. because uh, this is something for those of you guys who are building teams, is that we work with everybody on our team, but not everybody's really ready to run. There are a few things that you've got to do in place, and those of you who are watching who have not gotten started yet, you'll learn this when you get started. But there are eight core principles that we go by that, to run our businesses, and if, when you follow those eight core principles, then you're ready. Then it's like the student has arrived and the teacher will be there waiting for you. So now when people jump through those hoops, we're going to run with those people this summer. So we're actually forming a mastermind of an all-in team on our personal team this summer. And it's our mission to help 10 families break free. I think we actually got that language from you guys. Hey, that's pretty good. Let's just do what they're doing. And <laughs> 10 six-figure earners by the close of the year. And that'll take us to that'll take us over a million dollars because yeah. if ten people make six figures in this compensation plan, that probably adds about two hundred thousand. Us, oh boy, that's a big income disclosure right there. Yeah. Uh, see the income disclosure <laughs> below, emdisclosure.com. Yeah, right out loud. I mean, and so our, our we proclaimed in New Orleans that our our anniversary is December eighth, um, and so that's when uh, we have carved in stone that we'll cross over a million by then and uh, get our million dollar rings recognized by the company at the following event which they're guessing will be the first quarter after yeah, that. Four fifty so. to go in six months. Well done. Yeah. You know what you know what's interesting you guys, you said that that you came out of the New Orleans event just a few weeks ago and you made some new decisions. So yeah. I mean 
I know that the same thing was true for us. Uh, Nikki didn't get the chance to go to go to that one. It was just me flying solo, which was which was kind of weird for for me um, to be there without without my beloved. You know, I kept an eye on Nikki. <laughs> what was that? You said you got to keep my, keep an eye on him. Oh, eye on him. <laughs> Kevin helped keep me straight there. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. so glad. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's just so funny though because I came back home and Nikki was like, "Whoa! Like, where did all this energy come from? I'm digging it. It's sexy. Um, <laughs> what's what's happening next?" And I was I was just I remember calling home um, the night before I was gonna come back and I was like, "Like Nikki, like so much stuff is changing. Like we're going here. This is what we're doing. This is how it's gonna go. Like boom, 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 boom." And she's like, "Wow! I've never seen you do this because what she's usually the one that actually sets the big the big scary goal. She's usually the one that goes." Hey, I think we can do this, and I'm the one that's like, um, uh, now you're like really uncomfortable by it, right? And that's that's been. Um, and then like I the, slap him around a couple times, and I'm like, stop being a wussy, get over it. Yeah, yeah. So it takes sometimes it takes her a little bit to like kind of you know get get me like you know uh, out of some of those insane points of view that that you kind of start spiraling into, and and I'm grateful for that. And it's like she, this is the first time that I came to her with the insane point of view, or the but not the insane, like the crazy big, fat, hairy target, and um, it's just funny that when, when you put something like that out there, how much, um, I like, Melissa, how you kept talking about, like, the cellular sort of um, memory, or, like, the cellular, I forget how you put it. On a cellular level. That's yeah, right. yeah, and, and it's like it's like putting your body and everything behind it, you know, we put out some of these declarations for us to, to double what we've already done, do another 250K in the next 90 days, and then help 10 people break free, you know, whatever that is for them, you know, sometimes people... They only need a couple thousand dollars to quit their job and, and return back home to their family, right. you know. So we've left it a little bit, a little bit ambiguous in that sense. Um, but it's but whatever that we they know consider, that we can do. whatever that that person considers freedom for them, whatever that amount is, that's what we're gonna help facilitate. Um, yeah. And that's one of the things that really that really helped push us forward. And, and again, it's like tying back into this theme that you started bringing up, Kevin. It's like uh, when you get around people who are dreaming big, thinking big. And creating big, fat, hairy goals, you can't help but just just step up in every part of your being at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's what I appreciate about about getting the chance to hang out with you a lot more in New Orleans, getting to chat with you guys at some of those late night masterminds, if, you, if that's what you even call them, right? Yeah. You know, drink, drinking, debauchery, you know, and <laughs> where the plans come from, right? It's true. I've heard that from uh, quite a few millionaire entrepreneurs that you know the after party is where a lot of the Really amazing stuff happens, and and uh, well, no, kinda, we're, go ahead. I'm sorry. We're so so really fortunate in this company to have so many people be successful, to have them as um, you know, because they say that you know you are who you surround yourself with, right? So, um, in, if you would look at a lot of other companies, you might be able to point to a couple of people, and they're like behind the velvet ropes, and there's no way to get to them, you know, and there's it's just a natural thing in this company. So while it might feel like a hairy goal to us, I mean, for me, it's become so easy to achieve here because it's so normal. It's yeah. So, yeah. so much more normal here. It's, oh, a million dollars? We have what? How many millionaires now? Thirteen. Thirteen different millionaires, and there's, there's like six in line, and, you know, that is just unheard of in other companies. Um, and, you know, so that's... Um, and you know we want to make reference to the disclosure again. <laughs> uh, well, and, and the reason that we we keep pointing to the disclosure is because we really want to be transparent, and that's something that you know that's a huge part of the company culture. You know, it's like, um, and it, it's interesting though because it shows the average, and it's like, I've said this thing before, and Abram laughs about it. I like love this. Quotable. It's like, well, it doesn't take that much to be successful. You just have to do a little bit more than the average person, which is probably about nothing. Right, and that might be kind of like a punch in the face, but it's like, I think we've been so um, indoctrinated. You know, a lot of us, a lot of us who, fortunately, you guys like your your child is one of your kids is like at home and stuff and doing virtual school. But like, you know, I know I went to like Catholic school, and regardless of whether it's religion or public school, you know, you just get sort of like indoctrinated and uh, programmed to be in this employee mindset. And if you are somebody who has an entrepreneurial spirit, then you you don't fit into that mold, but you don't, you aren't necessarily exposed to something else, and right. so when you become an adult, you you have all this angst and anxiety and maybe depression. Then we start pop, you know we've got a culture of 
We've got these insane commercials now that are like, do you have depression? Now you can take Xanax well, and, you know, uh, side pill. And if you have, uh, if you have side effects from that pill, take this other pill. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then the disclaimers on that are, it's like 10 pages. And it's like the on the bottom it says possible cause of death, you know. And, <laughs> you know, like that's the world that we're living in right now. So, so when, when we talk about, you know, you're talking about this company and where you've been, and I just love your story, by the way. I really love hearing it. It's interesting to hear it on stage and then hear it here. I'm receiving it at a different level. It's like an intimate conversation, and hopefully you guys in the audience feel that too. I'm going to remember it so much more. Um, so where was I? Uh, so yeah, it's like you're talking about, you, you've had this background of being in all these different companies, and and the person who's making all this money is like this god, you know, like that's why I mentioned Guru. We put out this copy that mentioned like before this company, from what I could tell and the people I've been talking to, because we don't have the MLM baggage or the network marketing <laughs> baggage that a lot of people do, but like I remember even just looking at the industry and looking at when online marketing started to become more hot, like you, like I would say like even in like 2007, 2008, and I would look at all these companies that were popping up and just look and being like, I'm not joining this. This this seems crazy. Like it, it doesn't seem like it's made for the people, you yeah. know. And then there are these like gurus, you know, that are sort of like, I shall be so upon you the secrets if you just, you know, buy my product that, you know, to buy to buy this other product. And and it and it wasn't actually like high quality, you know. So I know I came across a lot of that stuff, and um, I'd like to think that I that I uh, am pretty perceptive, and I and I know when something is like real and there's like this real visionary and I think that's what I see in like Dave Wood is he's kind of like this you know the Martin Luther King of uh, online marketing or something you know he's like I'm he's in the minority you know he's got this unique vision he's like I'm gonna set people free and give all of this information that will actually truly empower people to do any business online to take any business you know maybe you're doing a business offline like coaching and actually enhance it and bring it more online and bring people to you instead of you having to chase people or if you're in a network marketing company what if you didn't have to do all the home meetings all the time you yeah. know it's like he's he's coming with into the world with this amazing incredible vision and here we are taking advantage of it and we've done it for ourselves and now we can help set other people free you know yeah, so model, model is a beautiful thing isn't it yeah. Absolutely, and that's that's what I consider. It's a new it's a new paradigm because I I've never seen anything like it. You know, I've honestly never seen anything like it, and I've never seen you know uh, I you guys know Marie Forleo. Mm -hmm. She's no. she's like this kind of she's like this hot goddess marketing chick, and and she's been on Oprah and stuff, and um and she actually does teach some marketing stuff, and and she says something like you know. In this day and age, you have to bring your whole self to the marketplace, mm -hmm. spiritually, emotionally, physically, and that marketing is like the single most important skill that you can learn. And if you're willing to learn that skill, it's like nobody can take it away from you. You know, in school, like we're talking about being, I've been talking about being indoctrinated and programmed, we're not taught how to make money independently. Right. We're taught to just fit in. Yeah. You know, so, go ahead. What you said right there, Nikki, as far as, far as like even being on this hangout, a lot of people are, are in the same business that we are, but have never been on a hangout, afraid to turn on the camera. You've got to be yourself 100% of the time. When the camera turns off, I've seen you guys at events, you're the same on camera as off camera, yeah. same with Melissa and I. Mm -hmm. That level of authenticity, if you will crack, if you will get over yourself and just be yourself instead of trying to be those perfect people behind the yeah, like, the, rope, the, like or old. the people that that rent a rent a you know a Jaguar and, and go in front of some model home and take pictures and say this <laughs> is me and this is my success or go rent it you know right. on an airport. I mean, that stuff is so so nineties. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody it's, knows, like, so fake. it's so fake and so hype and like that's not what people are attracted to. I mean, you will pr probably get some some people marketing like that, but no 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 people that will really do anything. You know, I mean, if you, you can be yourself and just market yourself, I mean, if you can learn to, like, we, we use Facebook a lot. We just kind of live our lives out loud. And, um, you know, there are people that are just attracted to that. We just um, enrolled somebody from Kevin's high school that he didn't really know growing up, but 
he's just been watching on Facebook and like, you know what, you know, I, I, I just want what you have. And yeah. so you, you just be willing to be watched, right? And if you're authentic and you're not trying to cover up anything and, you know, I mean, like if you don't have to worry about um, making sure that you're keeping up the persona or anything like that, then it's really simple to do. And if, if you have a heart, I mean, this, this company is so um, encouraging for, for those of us who have a heart for people. Um, because it's it's top down. It's like you know, like that old saying from, uh, is it like politics of trickle down economics? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that like that that trickles down from Dave Wood because that's who he is, and he's someone who. The biggest thing I respect about David Wood is that he's humble and he he remains a student. He he is always working on himself, always learning, always evolving. I mean, and the guy knows for his age. The stuff he has in his head and the, the things that he has conceived of, just just not even just for our company, but in life, um, it, it's really amazing. And, and so the capacity that we have as human beings, we're not even tapping into a, a small amount of it. There's so many t people that say that, you know, like there's so much that you uh, will regret not doing. I and mean, you have m much more regret for the things you don't do than, than the ones that you did and maybe messed up. So. Just dare a little bit. I mean, if it feels like a, a, a you know, a, a jump, well, jump, you know. <laughs> you jump in the pool right now? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's... Cool. it's in the pool. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, it's just worth, it's just worth it to, you know, to, to, to be yourselves because you're, you're compensated for that if you will just, you know, go out there and, and uh, apply everything, you know, be the student, be yourself, and, and just move forward. Yeah, and you know, I think with the, with the well, we know with the vision that is coming in Charlotte in two weeks, it's going to make it so much easier for people who click the button below and join us to duplicate. Uh, you know, we can't guarantee our results. Um, what we can say is that what we have coming is going to make it even easier than how we've had it to yeah. create massive results. So the time to position yourself is now. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And and we also already we have had a few shifts in the company and in the system that has allowed people who have never gotten results to get results. And you know, this is the other piece about new paradigm, it's like, um, I think I think in the past, the ways that I've, you know, tried to make money, it's like there's kind of this you have to learn so much before you earn and this is more like earn while you learn <laughs> you yeah. know right. um, so that's the other brilliance and beauty of it and that piece that you're speaking to Melissa it's like what if you don't have to put on any pretenses or you know uh, images that you know an image that isn't you um, but you can truly be yourself whether that is getting you know if, if maybe you, you your style is to get on a hangout and get dolled up and wear a freaking uh, like prom dress or something, or you know, like your red carpet style, or maybe your style is, uh, you know, sunglasses like Kevin here, or maybe it's like pajamas or whatever, you know, it's like you no longer have to wear or something or look a certain way to you know, make make a huge amount of money, and that's that's incredible. Yeah, I mean, I have no pants on right now. It's cool. <laughs> I knew something was turning yes. in that habit. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kevin said he'd have no pants on, too, if the kids weren't home. And it's like, you know, I think that's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome, you know. And, <laughs> yeah, and we've got our little can... puppy down there, too, you know, laying on the floor. And um, I just, you know, I, before we move, I know we want to bring out some of our team members who have had... had uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some team members. <laughs> <laughs> what are they wearing? <laughs> what are they wearing? You know, they might come out naked. So <laughs> if you're... I think Kevin, you know what? I, we, should, so we should cool. write some coffee talking about, because we were all going on the pool, I said... We should write some coffee talking about, you know what, the way to be successful is to be in a suit. You need to wear a suit. Always wear a suit. I not, you, oh, I mean a bathing suit. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, for sure. I like that. I like that. You know what, I, I can't help. I'm going to, maybe this is a pattern interrupt. I have to ask. You know, I, I've been fascinated with the whole screen. Almost like it looks like a greenhouse over your swimming pool. This is a Florida thing. Is yeah. that that the crocodiles don't come in? Like, what is that? The bugs, the uh, and it's alligators that are here. But uh, here I'll give oh, you a little more of us. But yeah, it's like goes all the way. It's kind of like two story, but I don't know if I'm showing it well enough. Yeah, yeah. you are. Yeah. But uh, 
We have a we have yeah, out the door. There's, there's a, a pond there's over a there. There's a pond right next door. So it does, I suppose it does keep the alligator from wanting to, to go into our pool. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, he's out there. Uh, Kevin heard a splash the other day and he got up and he was out there swimming around. It's uh, He's happy. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, for the most part, I, there's a lot of bugs in you know in Florida and so it keeps you, got, it keeps the bugs away. By the way, Tanner just named, I didn't even tell you this yet. Tanner was swimming in the pool earlier. He says, Dad, I got a new name for our pool. It's the bonus pool. <laughs> the bonus pool. I the love bonus it. Bonus pool. I oh, thought you know, it's the bonus talking. pool, baby. <laughs> I, I thought you said the boners pool, and I was like, <laughs> oh, 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 no, no. It's <laughs> <laughs> a different pool. It's a different. That's a different pool. That's yeah. a different. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I apologize for my not naughty ears. I really. Don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I right. Well, that being said, before people think this is going to turn into some sort of like one of their sexual fantasies, which it could, um, you, know, you have to pay for that. You have to pay for that. Yeah. Um, I think, um, we have a bunch of guests that are that are waiting right now. If you guys want to just jump on? Um, we'll we'll start bringing out the first people as, as they come, and you know we've been talking a lot about the sort of the success and the cool things that have happened for us, and then we've talked about how like you know um, both of us, you know Kevin, Melissa, and me, Nikki, we, we've had these like almost like a jump forward uh, since this New Orleans event like two weeks ago. And the, the cool thing that's happened, it's like that trickle-down effect that Melissa has been talking about. Uh, you know, it's coming from the top down. And we're starting to see inside of our teams, and inside the, the groups of people that we're working with and the master students who are coming through, um, they're having results yeah. that are really, really cool. And, and it's like, you know, one of the things that, that I know that we have most in common with, with you guys is that we, that we care about our people. And we want everybody to succeed. We want to be able to go do cool stuff with each other and to see people lifted up. Um, we're getting that more and more now. And the way that things have shifted and the way that things have changed makes it a lot easier for us to reach down and help. And it's also just people are blowing up. Like, okay, so we already have, like, our first our first person um, coming out here, Leslie. Um, everybody else, whoever's waiting, just jump on. Just jump mm -hmm. on. Just jump you guys on. should have your links. I think Kevin and Melissa probably sent... Sent you guys the links. Um, I know Sandy's gonna come out too. Um, shall we? Shall we just jump in? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, so hey, Leslie, what's going on? Hey, nice to see you. I am wearing clothes. Can you guys see me wearing clothes? I'm not naked, and I don't have my suit on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Aww. Aww, laughs> dang. No, dang. if you would have coached me ahead of time, I could have prepared a whole bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time. Maybe next yeah. time. Next cool. Time. Well, um, thanks for coming out, Leslie. I know that that you you broke away from work early. And you made it home. You made it home. Um, I know this has been like um, something that you. Yeah, cool. so, so, hey, Leslie, what's going oh, on? Hey, hey, nice. uh, I'm wearing clothes. I'm picking up the other one. Uh, I'm not naked, and I don't have my suit on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Andy, I think you I think you've got your uh your. Oh, is it good now? Okay, good. Okay, cool. Um. Yeah, when you when you guys come out, watch out. If you've been watching the re watching the hangout, it's gonna it's gonna play in your background. So be careful. Yeah, hang up first and then link up. <laughs> cool. Hey, so so Leslie, um, we want you to, to share for just two or three minutes. You know, what is it? What is it that got you wanting to lock arms with us and be a part of Empower Network? Uh, what made you want to get all in, invest in your education? What, what was what was that for you? in, in just you know two minutes. Well, That's I kind of for you. I kind of come from the Lawrence Tam school, so I'm still kind of working, right? I work yeah. a regular job during the day, so I'm kind of doing the Lawrence Tam method. And then I have three teenage boys that I'm raising as a single mom. So I, a couple years ago, my mother was in the hospital with kidney failure, and I was sitting there wondering how I was going to take care of my mother. I thought I'd have to, like, take care of her at home, and I had my boys that I had to handle, and then I had my job. My butt had to be in a chair. And thankfully, she got better with dialysis, but since that day, I was haunted by how am I going to provide for my family and take care of my mom if that ever comes up and that kind of thing. So it took me several years, and frankly, I decided to start a coaching business about last July, and then I found the Empower Network when I decided to blog. And, you know, I come from a very educated background. I have a master's degree. So I know you have to invest in yourself to make it up in the, in the future. So I do have a six-figure income in my job, 
I want to make a six-figure income here. I want to make a seven-figure income here. I know I can't do that if I don't invest in myself. I know that that's a requirement. So I got all in almost as soon as I got in with you. And I'm struggling. It's a little different than working at a job. So this is a whole new paradigm for me. And that's kind of fun and exciting because I'm learning new skills that I never had to learn to go to a job every day. So it's really kind of cool. And I'm bringing my boys along with me. Every time I go to speak, one of my kids comes to videotape me. They watch my hangouts. Their friends are creating blogs. They have a music channel now, so they're blogging on their music channel. So we're making this a family event, and the family is doing it all together. That's awesome, Leslie. That's awesome. I you love know, and I think the funny, I think the funniest part that you said, by the way, was. You know, it's it's been a little bit of a struggle, and it's like, yeah, you know, learning new stuff it can be like pretty 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 long road um, to get through sometimes. But here's what here's what she didn't tell you guys, right? It's that last week, Leslie had her first all in sale, and if you don't know what that means, it means that she crushed out a couple thousand dollars in commissions in a single day with her business. So I just want to congratulate that congratulate you for that, Leslie, because like. That is not average, right? Um, earning that kind of that kind of money in a single day, creating that kind of a, that that level of a sale in a single day, it's not average, right? That's why we have the income disclosure because most people aren't willing to show up like you've been willing to show up. So you know, hats off to you, and you're you're coming to Charlotte, right? Of course, I'm coming to Charlotte, and I'm bringing my all-in guy. So I have to do a shout out to Don Schmidt because the other night we were on the phone on a hangout with with Dave Woods, right? And so he puts this call out, and I have to tell everybody, this is kudos to you guys. You guys teach us every week. Get involved. Get active. Get involved. Get active. So Dave Woods puts this call out, and who's the first one on the phone on the hangout with Dave Woods? Don Schmidt, right? The person that went all in under me. And that's awesome because you're helping us learn those skills to get active, get involved, just don't sit back. And he, what did we have, five people from our team on the hangout with Dave the other day? That's not average either. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Thank you, Leslie. Did That's you have anything cool. else you wanted to ask her before we oh, go gosh. to Sandy? Um, you know what? There could be, but we'll see. We'll just we'll, we'll see. Just just hang out I, for I, a bit, I, Leslie, yeah. and, and yeah. we'll pull yeah. so we'll you back out. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. You know, it just like brightens my day just to see people like having more success, you know, what can mm -hmm. I say? So um, so next person we have here is the lovely Sandra Lovebeck. Sandra Lovebeck. Oh. Is that oh. something having oh. noise or feedback? You got it, Sandy? Uh, oh, hello. Oh, yeah. my video just went. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll come you. back in. I'll, I'll log out and come in. Um, okay. So okay. Sorry. Hey, um, Kevin, Melissa, you guys have some some folks that you want to bring out too, right? Where um, they hanging out? Uh, we sent we sent a link. I'm not sure where if they're gonna make it or not, but um, they're all living their lives. I mean, they don't. You know, they're too sweet. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I just made a bunch of money. I'm gonna go out and like have fun right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, did you um? Did you... Oh. Hey, well, we we wanted to, we want to show you guys something really cool, right? Um, this is something that uh, you know we we were we were yeah. not. Uh, this is yeah. not right. yeah. Bring the dog out, and it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, you know, we're we're happy to be at home because we get to hang out with this guy, right? And um, I don't know how how people do it when they get a new dog or or puppies or whatever. You know, he's a puppy. He's this is Zeus. He's five and a half months old. He's a little French bulldog. Um, Melissa's gonna get a French bulldog, right, Melissa? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's like, we're gonna investigate this a little further, um, so we keep we keep teasing them about it. But um, you know, when we first got him, we couldn't believe how much time it took to really give him the attention that he needs. And I can only imagine what it would be like to have a baby. Um, you know, <laughs> can't can't even imagine that. But just but just having him, I'm like, he needed to be fed every every couple hours. He needed to be walked and let out and played with. And I'm like. I don't know how you can leave this cute face at home if you're working a full-time job in the morning. <laughs> this cute face. You know, and then, and then come back at lunch, you know, and feed him, and then leave him again for four more hours. I mean, how could, how would how would you do that? And you do I, that? I'm amazed that um, I actually this might sound kind of 
I don't know, harsh, but I'm kind of like, most people shouldn't own animals because if you live, if, if you're going to raise a pup, I mean, if you look at how many animals are sent to shelters every day or just abandoned and dropped off, that is a symptom of the way that our society is set up. You know, this sort of grind, you know, whether it's nine to five or whatever it is, nine, eight or nine hours a day, you just grind in a cubicle or whatever, or maybe it's waiting tables. I've waited tables before, and it's like, that doesn't allow you to really spend quality time with your kids or your family or your pets. I mean, this is why pets, there's a lot of dogs and animals that are just ridden, ridden with anxiety, like just ridden with anxiety. And what's so cool is like, so we take them places and people go, they're just like, I mean, he's, you know, he can, obviously he's got puppy energy, he gets frisky, but they're like, he's so calm. He has this like calm presence, you know? And that's because we're able to have that. Because we're not sitting here constantly anxiety about our survival. And the animals and your children will duplicate you. They will, they will follow you, you know? And it's like, um, I look at, you know, this is one point I wanted to bring up, um, actually. So I'm glad that, that I have a chance to come back to this. You know, Melissa, when you were talking about Tanner, and I got to meet Tanner at an event, and I'm like, the first thing I thought, I'm like, who is this, like, little rock star, you know? And, like, I, he kind of reminded me of John Lennon. And it wasn't so much, I mean, he, maybe he could kind of look like a Beatle, but it was also his energy. Like, he just had this, like, really cool vibe, you know? And then I asked him, and I was like, would it offend you if I told you that you reminded me of John Lennon? He's, he's like, no, I love the Beatles, you know? John and, Lennon uh, is absolute he, idol. Yeah, yeah, so it's just really interesting. Um, but... Uh, but really, like, I wanted to ask you guys, too, like, just, just to really share with people that difference, you know, when it comes to being able to spend time with your family. You know, we don't have kids. Although I have an idea because I helped raise my niece for, like, a year and a half when she was three months to three years old. I babysat her every single day. Um, so I have, I have some, had some experience, been part of the village of raising a child. And, well, my sister had to work all day, you know. So what I noticed in your kids, this is just looking from the outside in. So, you know, by all means, I'm not trying to put you guys on a pedestal or say, you know, your kids are never mad at you or anything, you know. <laughs> but, like, I just, when I look at you guys as a family, I'm like, I just don't feel like they have, like, the typical sort of, you know, angst. Like, when I look at your kids and, and you guys are sitting as a family, you know, having dinner, and there's all this stress and tension, and everybody's fighting, and it's like, I feel like your kids, I'm sure there's times you're like, yeah, I want to just hang out with my friends, mom and dad, you go do your thing, but there isn't this, like, I'm so resentful, like, sometimes I feel like kids are almost resentful towards their parents, I know I was, because my mom would be like, you can't have this, you can't have that, we can't afford that, and I would just feel so frustrated, but I didn't know how to express that. So I just want your take on that, like just how, um, whatever you have to contribute to what I'm bringing up here, how you see that as far as like really having set up this lifestyle where your kids are at home, you're at home, and how that changes your relationship with your kids. Yeah, it, it really makes a big difference. And, you know, from the time that Tanner was little, um, we we didn't have to work. In fact, people actually, you said that about, about Zeus, about like he's so calm. We, we were always asked, doesn't your baby ever cry? And really, babies don't need to cry that much. Um, if you learn to read their behavior, learn to read their cues, um, they, there's a whole language that happens that most people don't have the time to figure out, honestly, because they're right. so stressed, because they're running, running. Um, and so you can respond to it, and then they, don't, they learn that they don't have to cry. So, it, you know, not to say he never cried, but very, very rarely. And so he, he grew up, um, he missed this, the cutoff for school by a week. And we were actually in Greece with uh, the sort of business that we were in. And uh, I was, we were, he was four years old. We took the kids with us to Greece, um, which was really cool. And I remember having a conversation with a friend about, I don't know what I'm going to do because he's, he's already reading. I taught him to read um, when we were home uh, because he was just really curious. And I would read with him every night. And so he's reading when he's four, and he misses the cutoff for school. So what am I going to do? Because he's going to be that kid that gets in trouble because he's bored. And so um, we 
decided, well, we got to figure out something else. And so I actually had a conversation because of being kind of out of the box, a conversation with somebody who was talking to me about unschooling, which isn't what we ended up doing, but um, it got me thinking. And it's um, that, that I don't ha you don't have to be in the box of doing what just what you do and what everybody else does. Like honestly, a lot of, a lot of people that send their kids to school, it's really glorified daycare. I mean, because what would they do if, if the kid didn't go to school every day? What would they do? And and I honestly feel that that most kids who go to public school, it is um, your the, the aim is to make good workers of them. Sit, you know, sit down, shut up, speak when spoken to, that whole model. And um, and we just didn't want that. I mean, he was just, we could tell from early on, he was just kind of a different kid and um, and and still, like, having this issue. And so we, we looked into, I started doing research and found out about virtual school. And um, he actually did first and second grade in one year at home. And he's never done public school. Um, and then Olivia, I wish I had known about it or that it had been available for Olivia when she was younger because she she really struggled in school. She's a very creative dancer, photographer, artist, you know, and so she struggled in like math and science and things like that. Not to say she couldn't do it, but she couldn't keep up the pace of what is expected when there's 30 some other kids in the classroom and you have a teacher who's on a power trip. Um, it's tough. And so um, we, we just decided to tell her, hey, she was in ninth grade, if you decide that you want to do this too, you can. And she called halfway through ninth grade, she was so frustrated and said, okay, I'm, I want to I wanna come home. And she went for the rest of her high school career in virtual school, and it was only because we were able to be home. And she went through her, her teenage angst, she went through some, you know, the rebellious times, and I don't know, honestly, what would have happened? She would have fallen. I feel like she would have fallen through some sort of a crack if we were both stressed out and working every day, and and um, we if we didn't have the time to, to really um, walk through all of that with her and 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 be there. And now we have a phenomenal relationship. It's um, I grew up not really being that close to my mother, and so it's um, it's so special to me to have a daughter who's who's one of my best friends, you know, who's, you know, she's 21 now and it's, um, she's really coming into her own and to, to have a, that close relationship makes a big difference and, you know, back to Tanner, I mean, like, he's, he's very, he's very out of the box and eclectic just in what he likes. I mean, you know, if he was, I don't know if he, he, he has studied the Beatles. You talked about John Lennon. John Lennon is his absolute idol. He's studied and researched and he has every book and picture, and, you know, but I mean that that wouldn't be the norm, right? That's not mainstream. So if he was going to school, it would have been totally different. And honestly, I think he probably would have gotten beat up a few times by now, <laughs> because he's really a quiet, sensitive kid and um, very very thoughtful. Um, and so it just it. I'm not saying that that our choice is the that's what you must do with your children, but we had the choice, and that's that is the biggest thing. And that that no matter the time you do get to spend with your kids, you can be fully present. 100% and be the primary influence in their lives, uh, and, and it, it it can be a choice for you. However, you know you want it to be. That gave me chills. That gave me chills. I was like, wow. Okay, primary the glorified babysitter part gave me chills, and just what you said there at the end, I'm kind of like my mind is like I almost don't have any thoughts. Sometimes my mind gets more like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like even though I don't have kids, I I care tremendously for children. Um, and the future of humanity. So, you know, to be able to be the piece you said, but I have the option. You're not saying in some dogmatic way, you know, if you send your kids to school, you're a lame parent. You know, we're not saying that. Um, but it's lame not to have the option to be present. Do what's best for your kid, yeah. To do what's best for your kid. So it's like you have the option to do what's best for them, and you can't actually be fully present if you don't have the time spend enough time with them to really get a sense of what they're going through and who they are. It's like when I think of, you know, teenagers coming home from school and they're like, oh, yeah, kid, you know, the kids are mean or whatever. And then it's like a lot of parents have this resignation, well, honey, there's nothing to do for you or pat on the back. And it's like there's no, there's no alternative. There's no alternative. So what you're saying here is so powerful. And I want to challenge any parent that is listening to this. It's like, you know, 
what if this moment right now, as you're watching the Connects share their story, this is your your time to make a decision to create a different future for your for your child because you can make a difference and. You know, I think there's this cliche and stereotype that, oh, whatever, your kids go through this stuff anyway, and they end up either loving you or hating me. But it's like, I really believe that because of who, how you guys have shown up, you now have that close relationship with your children. You know, and, and if you're not the primary influence, then guess what becomes the primary influence? Beyonce and uh, Angel Brangelina and TMZ and all the other, you know, not to knock these, hey, Beyonce's a beautiful woman, these are, you know, but there's a lot of emphasis on fame in our society, and if you don't have that, you know, sense of well-being coming from your home to right. come back, like you guys, you guys created that foundation. Say that again. If you don't have the foundation, exactly, exactly. Then, then your kids just become run over with all the junk out there, exactly. all the other stuff as their primary influence, including the teacher that's playing the power game at school. You know. Or the the kids that are making fun of them, or whatever that is. So um, you know, if you are like, that's it, I'm ready to have a different future. Click on the link below. And it's cool too that Kevin involved um, Tanner. Like our kids, have, we involve our kids in our business too. Leslie mentioned that before. And you know, like we were going, um, we had a, we talked about this on stage. We had a um, a goal, and uh, you know, we had to make back the money that we had spent to get started and you know this is our goal and if we hit this goal we'll not only pay that but we're going to be so much further ahead and so every day he would have Tanner write down the next name this is person that got started. Tanner, Tanner is my accountability partner. The, the other wow. thing I, would, I yeah, love that. Yeah he's my accountability partner. The other thing I wanted to say is that coming to events with your kids I know a lot of people are watching right now should I bring my kids and you know Tanner and Olivia have gotten to meet you know Abram and Nikki and gotten to meet Dave Wood and gotten to meet Tracy Walker, and it's amazing. It's almost like they're just normal people. Like they look extraordinary on camera and all this stuff, but then seeing behind the scenes and all that stuff, and so they get a better vision for like they can be powerful as well. And you know, I used to be starstruck, like wow. Then I got in the radio in my twenties, and I met some of these rock stars coming through Harrisburg to the radio station. I thought, Man, those guys are dirtbags. Why do I think they were so cool? You know. But what's what's cool about Empower Network is that. You get to see the real deal both on and off camera, like I mentioned earlier. And teaching our kids that is so important because then they'll have their self-esteem and realize, wow, I matter. I'm pretty cool too. And I can be myself and it's a safe place to be himself. Tanner can be himself yeah. all the time. And be celebrated for it. And Olivia can be herself too. And you know, I can we, tell. I can tell. When I, that's, that's the thing that, you know, I tagged you guys in a, in a post the other day because, yes. and it was about parenting. It was like, because that's when I think about, you know, parents who have children who are, these kids are able to be themselves, I think about your kids. You know, you can just tell that when you meet them from the get-go. And that's so powerful. And even if they don't, you know, they're not interested necessarily in online marketing or whatever, you know, um, they could bring their iPad and stuff, and but they're still going to get snippets of whatever they need. You know, you let them be their, you know, a lot of kids, that, hey, I'm ADD. You know, it's like, a lot of kids are 80, so it's it's not that you bring them expecting that they're going to be, like, sitting down the whole time and listening. But there are some kids that are, I met a girl, uh, her name is Precious. That, Madison Precious. Madison Precious, 10 years old, at a workshop. She, she sat there the whole time, like, like just taking notes. Like, she's actually, like, into blogging and, like, you know, all this stuff. So you never know what child may, may be interested. And then the other piece is well, like, where else are kids? Where else are kids exposed to a whole group of adults going for it, totally going for it in life? Right. And and you know, like being in, you know, our name, is, the company is Empower Network, and, and but it is so true that that there are people who are empowered in quote unquote normal life. They're just not exposed to that, you know. They go, they're exposed to their friends, you know, parents go to work, you come home, you, know, you might go on vacation. You know, like, what what is the norm that these kids are uh, exposed to most of the time? And for us, since almost all of our friends are all people that we've worked with, um, our kids are exposed to to people who are achievers and people who who go after their dreams and you know. Um, and, and you know, it, yes, you might have to let go of some quote unquote friendships in your life um, as you grow, and they don't. And and that you know, that's one of the more 
it seemed painful at the time for me, but but I tell you, the the universe abhors a, a vacuum, and you make a whole bunch of <laughs> great friends, and um, and then that's who you get to expose your family to. It's, it's a pretty, and, and you just get better by association. Every every time you 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 said something, Melissa, there's like there's like this nugget that I think people like almost miss. <laughs> so I wanted to point one out that I that I just love that you just said. Is you said the universe abhors uh, a vacuum, and you know, again, it's like it could get dirty. We're not talking about whores here. We're talking about the word abhor. <laughs> like another word for hate, right? So love the it. universe doesn't like it. The universe hates a vacuum, meaning if you create space in your life, um, something is going to take space, right? So if you, you know, um, you, you up-level in your life and you uh, you lose some friends, well, guess what happens? If you're not consciously picking who or what you're filling the space with, the universe is going to fill it for you some way, somehow, and you might get stuck with something that you that you don't really want. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. yeah. So I just had to pull that out because I thought that was brilliant. That's something that we've been experiencing a lot of since um, the beginning of this year was just really looking at the friendships and close relationships we, that we had. Um, are these working for us, yes or no? And it's not like you call somebody up and say, hey, I'm done being your friend. Right. But it's like, stop calling. You know, I, I did have that happen. <laughs> yeah. just totally unfriended me and said, you know, like, because they, they just didn't get it. And and yeah. it's okay because they, they they want to stay small in their life and and she was a person that 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 works for her and yeah. God bless her you know but yeah. um but it was I see the thing is is you will start to make people uncomfortable when you start to achieve in your life and you're you're um she started saying I was going on vacation all the time um no <laughs> not not really but uh like as if it just happened to me I sat I sat home on the couch and the stuff just fell into my lap <laughs> <laughs> which I know that there are some people that join a network marketing business and expect that to happen this is why our our uh, average earnings is um is uh, so skewed because it, it includes people who come in and do absolutely nothing <laughs> but uh but yeah I mean it's yeah there are people that that won't get it and and it's okay you know I I, I said that on our team hangout the other day about how the, there's a great saying out there and I, I paraphrased, I don't know it by heart, but it's basically you'll have some people in your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Yeah. Sometimes somebody comes into your life to, to fill a need. You know, It's a specific thing that, that, that needs to happen in your life and that's the reason. Sometimes it's a season. I mean, I, the, this friend I grew up, we were best friends growing up and, and it was because we grew up next to each other. It was basically a friendship by default, right? You know, Most of our friendships growing up are by default because that's who's in our realm, right? And and then you know you have other people who you'll find that you will be lifetime friends with because you've chosen and because you're on the same path because you share so much of the same passion moving forward, and and it because it's so healthy for both of you 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 bring out the best in each other so it's really okay like we get at this stuff in our mind of oh my gosh I might lose people you know there there really isn't anything lost in the universe either you know what I mean it's it's because it is. Um, it's something that can be, um, like you said, Abram, up level. You, you really, if you choose to surround yourself with people who are also going for it, for pe with people that that might actually be doing more than you, so that you're challenged. That's a pretty cool thing too. Yeah. Um, and and it just by default now, our default now is all people who uh, it's a pretty cool thing are are all. Uh, achievers and, and going for it, and it's now that's really normal. I mean, I, I honestly, when I come into contact with a normal person, it feels strange. Abnormal. <laughs> yeah, that feels abnormal now. <laughs> well, well, speaking of up leveling, speaking of up leveling, um, I'm just, I'm just loving this conversation. It feels like, it feels like a, like kind of like, kind of like a, like a, like a, like a. Um, I just, I'm, I get so excited. The, the. The thoughts go faster than, than the time. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I forgot what I was talking about now that I said all that stuff. But but speaking of up leveling, right? Loving this conversation. Speaking of up leveling. Speaking of up leveling. Um, well, we're we're excited to have Sandy Levesque out here. She just popped out. She's been. Uh, she might be having like an interesting um, happening for the internet right now in France. I'm not sure what. Right. You'll have, have to turn the hangout off. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Oh. 
Yeah, we can. We can, can hear you. you. Yeah, we, can. we can hear you twice. We can call it see me. Oh, no, you. is that working no. now? Yeah. Okay. Um. You can see me. Sorry, I wasn't clear. Yeah, we we can we can see you, but we're getting a lot of feedback. But we're getting a lot of feedback. Yeah. Oh, okay. You might have the other hangout. Yeah, no, I, I, the other hangout. no, I don't have anything else open. Um, it's just the the internet's a bit strange today for some reason, but it should be hmm. Uh, better. It's good enough. Yeah. Well, um, well, go go ahead and um. And we'll see how we'll see how it goes. You you talk and you tell people your story, and then uh, and then we'll go. Sure. Okay. Yeah. okay, I'm gonna give you a talk in my living room as I do that. <laughs> this is my magic hangout spot. It should work. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I could just quickly say, uh, my name is Sandy Levesque, and um, I was actually a broke Zumba instructor when I started in Power Network. And what you were just talking about with the people that you're around. And like normal people, Melissa, it really, it really rang a bell. You can still hear, okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, because I was I was doing something that looks very fun. You know, a lot of people when you say you teach them, they're like, oh, that's so cool. And you know, I spent a lot of my time shouting, shake your booty, and like, <laughs> shake it, shake it, which is like, it was all good. But you know, with any passion that you have, if you do it over and over and over and over and over and over, it started to become much more of a job, even though I was my own boss. And and also what I found was that the people coming to my classes were mostly French women. I live in France. And and they all were coming out of work. Most hated their jobs. I'd ask them, how are you? And they'd be like, oh, I can't wait for the weekend. I can't wait for the holidays. And I had to really like get my energy high before a class to be a happy Zumba instructor. And just surrounding myself with the community of Empower this past year and a half has been such a life-changing experience because now, like you were just saying, the people that I speak to and hang out with the most are all people that are going for what they really want. They're not accepting the lie that you can't go for it. And it's just been so massively inspiring to myself. And it did take me a while to actually see any results. Um, so, I, you know, I, I couldn't really emphasize when people say, well, does it really work? Or, you know, uh, they're not sure that they can do it. Because I felt like that for a long time. I didn't really have any marketing experience. And in fact, before doing Empower, I was doing not-for-profit work in um, campaigning and activism work against poverty, ironically. And so doing Empower Network is, <laughs> is like going to the other extreme. And I've had to radically shift my circle of friends because I, I was friends with people that, you know, I would literally go out in the streets of a tambourine campaigning against city firms and like Occupy Wall Street, the English equivalent. That was me. And so I've done like a 90, 180 degree U-turn because I just realized that I'm being part of this team that I'm with, you know, working with Abram and Nikki and with everyone on our team and, and the greater uh, community at Empower just helped me realize that instead of fighting the system all the time, you can just do your own thing, like just ignore it. Because <laughs> when you fight it, you just give it more energy. It's like those video games where you keep trying to fight something, and the more you fight it, it just gets bigger and more like powerful, and it just wraps you up in it. And as soon as I stopped focusing on it and started tuning into the Empower Hours, I actually get up at 3 a.m., in France every week to listen to them because they're so amazing. Tuning into our, our team events and going to the live events has just really helped me have shifts. And I have actually made sales of uh, $3,419 in the past month, which is, uh, I was so happy because that's my biggest ever results. And partly because of the changes that Empower has just made. And I should say my results aren't typical. But I chose very early on that I didn't want to be typical. I remember looking at the average earnings disclosure and thinking, I am not going to be on that. <laughs> so so I'm just really inspired and, and excited and just very uh, inspired to hear your story as well, The Connect, because you've been someone that I really emphasized with, because I had, uh, had a lot of student debt. Um, and so just listening to your story when I first joined Empower, I remember listening to it at like 3 AM one morning. 
in, with headsets because my friends were in the room and I didn't want to wake them up. And I was so inspired I had to go and dance in the bathroom afterwards. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so when I was, knew I'd be on a hangout with you, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> You know, you said something, Sandy. You said um, you you fought against poverty, and there's um, there's it's really interesting that what you resist persists. And so, the best way to fight poverty is to be for wealth. You know, to yeah. go, go yeah. for wealth. And and it's um, it, it's really it's really interesting how um, it, that's a paradigm shift in and of itself for a lot of people. Is that well, I need to fight against all of these things. Well, if what you said is is so true. That just gives it energy. So you're flowing energy one way or the other. You're either going to flow in a negative pattern or in a positive one. You've just learned to say, okay, so I'm going to shift over here to positive, and I'm going to be for wealth now, and give yeah. and my energy to that. And and that's it's so much more fun, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> totally, <laughs> way more fun. When my first um, team member had his first commission, it, I was so happy. I was. It was just. It felt so good because I knew it was actually money he'd have in his bank account that he could use. It was so different to sort of lecturing people on how bad the system was. You know, like it, it just felt so good. I like. I literally had to dance again. <laughs> I love to dance for like two hours in my on my own on the balconies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Andy. I'm sure the audience would love to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such respect for people over in Europe, you know, being on these hangouts after midnight. I know it's midnight at your house now, and tuning in yeah. for hours at three in the morning. That is awesome. And, I, and I'm saying this because I noticed somebody watching the hangout right now who maybe lives near Charlotte, who's thinking, "Holy cow, Sandy's coming from France." Yeah. You yeah. have no excuse if you live in the United States. <laughs> yeah. I think if you live in the United States or North America, you have no flipping excuse. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I talked to somebody today who said, like, you know, well, you know, I need help. Well, you know, we have hangouts. We do this. Oh, but they're so long. What? <laughs> I mean, you know, we have people in the middle of the night in Europe, you know, I'm ready to receive. Give it whatever you're going to give me, I'm going to take. You know, like, I'll, I'll get it. And so it's like you'll never – outperform that. When somebody is just like, oh, you know, I don't know, like that whole attitude, it's, it's just not going to happen. And, and, and again, those are the people that, that if, if they're not going to go for it, um, remember that we talk about our, our uh, income disclosure, but those are the people that show up at the bottom, and those are the people that, that, that you know, if they're looking for reasons not to get started, they say, oh, but there's a lot of people who don't make money. Of course there are, because there's a lot of people that come in and do nothing, <laughs> you know? And, yeah. Or take ineffective action, right? They say, well, you know, I, I wrote two blogs and I didn't make any money. <laughs> you know, I did something. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it is what it is. I mean, you know, there, there are people all over the place that, that, that will think that it's a lot. It is not. But you have somebody like Sandy that comes in here and says, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to follow the leaders. Um, I have even Nikki here that, that say do A, B, and C. So I'm going to do A, B, and C. And just like in a Zumba class, you tell people to follow after you, you've learned how, now how to follow so that you can then become the leader. And, mm -hmm. and it's fantastic because nobody's ever going to be able to give you lip about how they can't get to an event <laughs> or, or why they can't yeah. be on a hangout because you're doing it. So, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. And, you know, I just, what I, what I love about Sandy, too, is, is that she has, you know, we work with her pretty closely because... And I know, I know you know this, Kevin and Melissa, when somebody is in a space of actually choosing and demanding that they know where they're going and they're going to get there no matter what, no matter how long it takes, and it's unconditional. You know, we talk about unconditional love for, there's all, you know, all these quotes and stuff on Facebook or whatever, but what about that unconditional love for yourself and your own success, you know? And it's like, it's that energy of no matter what it takes, so... You know, we've, we've been with her, all, you know, this whole time that she's, you know, been uh, doing the business and, and not getting a lot of sales. She's gotten more exposure and influence and stuff, but it's been a slower start for her. And the thing is, like, look, she, she said it herself. She spent a lot of time campaigning with the tambourine yeah. against poverty. <laughs> so yeah. it might take her a little bit of, of time to undo that. You know what I'm saying? It's like... Yeah. She was. She allowed herself to have the patience with herself through her own process, and the entire time she's been with us at Empower, she's never said, 
I mean, she blogged more than we did, to be honest. She blogged more than we did. And she never once said, eh, this isn't going to work. She's like, okay, it's not quite quite happening. It's not quite shown up in my bank yet, but I know it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then once she had her breakthrough, it's like boom, 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 boom. And now I can feel her business. It's exploding. You know, she didn't have the if-then disease. I talked about this to Kevin today. Um, I said, you know, it's like it's such a disease, this if-then. So this is a, a cool thing. It, people say, well, if I have these results, then I will take these actions. That That is so screwed up. I mean, it's so, so commonplace thinking. If I, if I like, you know, if I uh, get an all-in sale, well, then I'll go to, to Charlotte. If, if this if then thing is is nuts, it's it's until I will persist until I hit success because that's the only outcome that that I accept. I, it's not well. If I have success, well then I'll do this. Um, stop if thening yourself. It's because that should be taken out of your vocabulary. I will persist without exception, mm -hmm. and 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 that's all it is. I mean, so you keep uh, and and you're you're evolving, right? So. It might, like um, Nikki just said, I mean, it, it might take a little bit because we all come here with, with all kinds of different, you know, downloaded software in our heads. So sometimes for some people it might take a little bit more to adjust your mindset. And, and honestly, it is, it is so many more times a mindset issue than it is a tools and mechanics issue. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty simple to employ our tools and mechanics, but what most people... Um, take a little more time with is the personal development aspect, working on the mindset, working on yourself, getting out of your own way. Uh, and honestly, for some people, that's too much. It's like, I, I don't want to look at myself. I don't want to look at changing. It, it sometimes can be painful, and it, and it can be rigorous. You know, you, you need, it's something that you need to work on each and every day and be committed to evolve. Um, and so, you know, she was somebody who who might have taken a little bit more time because of her previous thought patterns and whatnot. She had some deeply held, a paradigm was a deeply held belief. Um, she had to have that shift a little bit. She kind of got an inkling that, um, okay, I see people who this is working for and I would love that too. Okay, I'm, I'm going to jump on board and I'm going to start doing what they say to do. So I'm taking all the actions. Meanwhile, and, and it's not to say don't take actions, but meanwhile, you continue to work on yourself. So she tunes into Hangouts. She listens to audios as she just got done saying. She was listening to audios and when she was done she wanted to dance. That's because she's realizing truth. When you recognize truth, uh, it, it, it's a powerful thing because your, your inner being recognizes that stuff long before your, your conscious brain does. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden your people are speaking to, to that, that long-held belief that you almost forgot about and that person inside of you wants to jump for joy and it starts to all, little by little, come together. And I talked to my team about, you know, it's, it can be a subtle shift. It, it doesn't, it's not like fireworks go off and then the next day you're successful. You just keep employing this. You keep a, a steady course of moving forward, moving forward, moving forward, climbing the ladder rung by rung. And then all of a sudden you round the corner as if you're trying to find an address and there it is. It just, it, you normalize the success so much because you visualized it for so long in your brain and you've continued to practice and evolve and work on yourself, that, that that's the outcome. That becomes the only outcome. That's all I'm Melissa's on a roll today, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I love yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, well, and I just have to add to what you said. Um, what I thought of when you were speaking about the if-then disease maybe hit it home in a slightly different way for somebody um, who's maybe thought, well, I've heard that before. It's like, well, imagine if you meet somebody you think is your soulmate or a potential love relationship for the rest of your life, you know, or just somebody that lights up your world. You're like, oh, my God, this person's rocking the world. I love this person. And then you go, you put on the brakes, and you go, but you know what? If, until and if that person gives me a commitment, a lifetime commitment, I'm not going to show up as 100% me. You know, I'm going to hold back my love. I'm going to I'm going to reel it in, keep it in here. Only if and when they, they do X, Y, and Z, they, they propose or whatever, that's when I'm going to be vulnerable and show up as myself. Mm -hmm. And it's like, is that person ever going to 
you know, fall in love with you as much or propose to you or whatever. No, never. Not unless they have a totally unhealthy dynamic themselves with themselves <laughs> and a lack of self-love, you know, and they're like, well, I, it's my dream to just chase somebody who's hard to get, you know what I'm saying? But then once you show them, you're, then, it's, then it's over, you know. So then that's like a whole unhealthy thing anyway. But, like, I just wanted to, you just inspired that in me, Melissa, because you guys talked about relationships in the beginning, and I was like, maybe we can tie this in. And give it just like a slightly, you know, just add a metaphor to it. It's like imagine if you did that in your relationships or you're even somebody like, wow, this could be a new best friend, but mm, only if they like, you know, blah, 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 offer me, you know, everything they have, then I'm going to show up as me, you know, and it's like that's never going to work. You know, it's so, a great analogy, Nikki, because you, in a love relationship, you need to give all of yourself. You know, you have to dare greatly, right? And it, you have to be vulnerable mm -hmm. uh, to, to connect with that other person. You have to do that with yourself when you're going for something like this business. You have to be vulnerable. You have to dare greatly. You have to go for it and be and give 100% of yourself. It's not you can't be toe in the water with this stuff. It's because that's the results you're going to get. I mean, if you want the cannonball results, you know, of jumping in and being to connect. Yeah, that's right. To connect. Um, if you want the cannonball results, if you really want it to, to make a splash, and, you know, no results are guaranteed, of course, but if you want the opportunity to have that, then then you have to be willing to put yourself out there, to put yourself out there it, just as you would in a love relationship, to get, to reap the benefits of everything that you would get back from, you know, a, a potential um, mate, but then in this, this case, it is a good uh, an analogy because it's the same thing, you know, this business gives us back a whole lot of love. <laughs> it sure does. It sure does. Well, I want to ask, uh, Sandy, are you still there? Did she pump, did she she pump off? In the background. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Darn it. Darn it. Oh, darn it. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm just sending my dog out. <laughs> yes, go on. Um, yeah, so I wanted to ask you also, like, what would you have to say? Because, you know, we've got... Our, uh, you know, team members listening, people who are already part of the Power Network. We've got some people who are maybe watching from the outside in. Um, you know, what would you have to say? What What is your advice to somebody who uh, maybe hasn't had the result they want yet? You know, or they've been struggling for a bit. Um, what What comes to you? Like, what's something? Some advice that you can give them? Uh, something actually that really helped me get that energy shifting. Uh, quicker than before. I mean, there's loads of things, but this has just been such a, a, a huge contribution. Is that I wrote out, you know, like a lot of people say you should have a statement of what you would like to visualize or your targets. And I'd done that. I'd done the, the kind of think and grow rich t exercise. And I found that I would read it and I wouldn't get very um, excited. Um, and you need to have the energy of what you want to create for it to work. So then I would write out like my perfect day of what I was work shooting for, and the same thing like it wouldn't really get me excited. But what really started to to make a difference about two months ago was I began I wrote out my my perfect day when I get the results that I'm looking for, like my target, like um like from start to finish. I wake up, I go for a walk with my with Chico, my dog. I do this. I check into my back office. I've made some sales. Oh my God! That means I've gone over like um, my 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 target is seventy five thousand um, dollars in three months. That means I've gone over it, and I've got like the exact number. And I write it all out. I'm like I jump around, I go dancing, uh, I <laughs> I book a massage, I I make a video. I'm so happy. I tell my team, I tell uh, you know like different friends, and then I go out and you know uh, for a like, lovely meal or something. And every time I read that, I get so like so much energy flowing through me. That I, I do that at uh, the start of the day, and um, it's just a very practical exercise that I found helped me get that kind of uh, excitement energy that, that makes my business happy. Because when I was sometimes, when I didn't um, do that, I just kind of was spinning my wheels a bit, you know, like, but it, but it felt like I was shaving off so much crap that it, <laughs> that it, I had to sort of get to, like you were saying, Melissa. So I would do that exercise and I would just say, you came here, you know, whether you're part of Empower or not, you came here for a reason. You know, there was something that drew you. I didn't have a clue what Empower was when I signed up 
with Abram and Nikki, I literally didn't even know it was a network marketing, affiliate marketing business. Uh, but I just, the energy was calling me so strongly. So if you are watching this, or you're, you're already in Empower, then just remember what brought you here, because that's what I would do when I was really doubting things, and I would literally have moments thinking, am I completely on the wrong path here? Is this ever going to happen? And I would remember that initial inspiration, and it, literally like keeping a little flame alive. <laughs> you know, like you're walking through a cave and you've got this candle, and, and the more that I remembered it, the stronger the candle got. And now it's literally like a fire, you know. So just don't let it, don't let people put it out because I had so many people saying to me, mm, what are you doing? That's a scam or da da da. And, and I'm so grateful that, uh, that I had the support personally actually of Abram and Nikki at some points because they would actually defend me on my Facebook call, you know. And, and it was just such a, uh, such an insight for me that I could have people um, who've got my back, you know, uh, and not have to have friends that would be nasty to me because I've just kind of allowed that until now. So keep going and do something that gets you excited every day about where you're going. Candy, um, I just have to say, and for everybody listening, what you described in that practical exercise to me describes what we mean when we say you have to choose it and that the choice starts from the inside. And it, it's, you know, it's not, and it's not just saying one day, well, I am going to do this, and I'm going to make money online, and I'm going to make this happen, and then you, the next day you forget about it, and then the next day you forget about it, and then the plane becomes smaller and smaller and smaller until there's like nothing, hardly anything left, and then you're like, oh, I guess this isn't working. It's like, no, you have to choose it every single day, again and again and again and again, until it becomes that fire. Like you're talking about, like, now it's this, it's this fire. It's like, there's not, it's unstoppable. Now it's like, like unstoppable. So you have to keep reinforcing every single day, every single day, choosing, choosing, choosing until it is that fire, you know. And and I can tell that from looking at our team here, um, and looking at who's getting results and in the comments, I can I can I know that probably there's quite a few of you or a lot of you that have not done what Sandy's doing right now. This is a very simple, practical you spent maybe what? Twenty minutes? half an hour of loving yourself enough to write that shit down. And yeah. sorry, I'm just going to just write that shit down. <laughs> and, um, and then you read it for probably, you sit with it for probably five minutes a day and you do that for two months. And now you're making sales. You, you had a, um, an all-in, your first all-in sale a couple days ago. You had like 250K sales in a row. You had, uh, you know, you're just having, you had four members in a week. I mean. Five now. Five, five now. I mean, <laughs> Like, yeah. high five right there, sister. Like, that's <laughs> really happy. And I know you're, I know now you're also lighting a fire under everybody else's butt in our team. Like, there's people who have been watching you and they're like, oh, your videos are so inspiring. This is so great. This is so great. Now, the money's showing up and they're like, oh, shit, you just invalidated my excuses. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, Sandy Levesque. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy to assist. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just I'm just glad that that you made the decision uh, to get started with us because the the journey that you've really gone through is, is the one that um, you know all of us have gone through and are, are going through, which is which is the one where you're learning a lot, you really don't know much of what's going on, and you just kind of go for it because you know you know that there's a result waiting for you, and you know that you're gonna miss out if you don't take action. Right, you know that you're gonna miss out if you don't take action, and I know that you were like on that webinar that I was doing, uh, you know, over a year and a half ago, watching and thinking to yourself, "There's, there's no way I'm gonna miss out on this. There's something here for me. I don't even know really what it is, but I'm going to get in now." Mm -hmm. Right, and I know that's like it's so funny because I know that there's somebody watching right now that's thinking the same exact thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's, that's that's if you're feeling that same way, uh, it is time to take that leap, take that jump that Melissa was talking about. It's like, fuck it, it's time to get in, right? You know, it's time, it's just time to get in. There's a button below this video. You can click it. You'll be able to join immediately. Immediately, you know, get your credit card out, put the information in, join. You can get started, take a peek, look around for as little as twenty-five dollars, and uh, and get started on your journey with us. Right, get started on your journey with us, and, and you can actually come meet us for an awesome event. Um, the end of this month in Charlotte, 
Uh, we can give you more details for that when we are all in. Of us on this panel. We can meet everybody on this beautiful panel, right? Yes, all of this can be yours. <laughs> <laughs> and I promise I'll be wearing pants when I see you next time. <laughs> and, uh, if you're if you're already in and you're not all in, uh, that's what you need to do next, right? Um, that's that's the next part of your that's the next part of your education and getting where you where you need to go. Um, that's what's been essential, I know, for both Leslie and Sandy, and learning the skill sets that were required um, to to finally break through in their businesses in a huge way. And it's like, yeah, it took it took some work. You know, Kevin and Melissa shared that. You know, um, Melissa especially, like, been in the business for a long time, <laughs> right? And then after some time, they started having more results. After a little bit more time, they got bigger. And then it's like suddenly, everywhere you look, it's like commissions, commissions. They're raining from the sky. You go to Disney World and you're like, oh, hey, we just crossed a half a million dollars in our business in like two years. You know, what's next? What's possible now? Um, you won't find out unless you click the button below and get started with us. You won't find out unless you get all in and you meet us in Charlotte because what's happening in Charlotte is going to be the freaking coolest thing you've ever seen in your entire life. And it's like we don't even necessarily know what's going on, although we do know some of the inside stuff. But you're going to have to go to Charlotte to find out what it is and how it can affect you and your life, how it can change your business. And I know, and I can speak for everybody here, that... Power Network has done something powerful in our lives. And if it weren't for Empower Network, we wouldn't have the chance to be friends and to get to meet each other and to get to raise each other up and to get to, you know, bring this freedom movement forward and help so many friends, families, and people that have been struggling to actually break free from the money matrix. And that's what we're going to do in the next 90 days. We're proud to partner with you guys. Kevin and Melissa, thank you for coming out and hanging out with us today. We appreciate you so much. And and you too, Leslie and Sandy, for, for sharing your inspiration and sharing for other people that, like, look, this is possible for you too. It's not just Kevin and Melissa who, you know, who walk on water and shoot lasers out of their eyes and, you know, um, <laughs> you know, wear, wear cool glasses, right? I love your glasses, Kevin. And have alligators in their backyard. Right. It's not, it's not just them <laughs> and, you know, some, some hippies out in Boulder, Colorado who are just, you know, raking in the money off the money tree, you know. It's like it's not just – People like us that, that are having success, it's also other people as well. And I think in the time that you spent with us, you'll probably realize that we're pretty dang normal. You know, there, there's not too, not too much that's, like, crazy exciting about us except for the results that we're getting because we're making different choices, choices that take bravery, choices that take some courage, and choices that will ultimately change your life should you, should you choose them every single day. And your candle will grow the same way that, can, that Sandy's candle is growing, and it will ignite into a fire that will never be put out. And that's what you get when you join us. That's what you get when you push the button below. You join, you take out your credit card, and you just do it, and you meet us in Charlotte. So that being said, thanks for coming out, everybody. Kevin and Melissa, do you have anything else to share before we go? Well, I'm, I'm pretty complete. Yeah. This has been awesome. a blast. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here and meet some of your team, and can't wait to see you guys, everybody, in two weeks in Charlotte. We're going to have a blast. Woo. That's right. right. That's right. Cool, everybody. Well, thank you. Thanks yeah. for hanging out with us, and uh, have a magical, wonderful day. Thanks, guys. Yeah.